So to add our update password section, let's go ahead and add a part in our routes where we will say get passwords or password as singular. And this will go to passwords edit and we'll have a patch request this time to password. And we will put that to passwords update. And the reason we're doing that is because the passwords route is for a user who's already signed in. So that user already has a password and we're really editing and updating their password. We're not creating a new password for the user. Um, technically we are, but we're updating a user. So we're not actually creating a new user or anything. So that's why we're using the edit and update there as opposed to new or create. It really doesn't matter, but it is um, up to you if you want to do something different. So let's go and add another controller into there. Passwordscontroller.rb, that is plural. And we have defined that as passwords here. Generally, your controllers are plural, but they can sometimes be um, specified as, as singular. So let's go ahead and add application controller, inherit from there, edit, and we'll add update as well. And in this one, we wanna actually make sure that the user is logged in before they can go anywhere in here. So we can write a before action here to require that the user is already logged in. So we can say require user logged in and give it a method name like that. But we don't have to define this method inside of our passwords controller. We can actually define it in our parent, the application controller, and that way we can reuse that throughout our application anywhere in any controller. So this is gonna be really handy for using in other places. So we'll define this by saying redirect to the, let's say sign in path with an alert of you must be signed in to do that. And we will do this only if current.user is empty or nil. Um, and that is going to redirect the user to sign in if they are not there. And by using that method name, it's going to automatically find that method and call it. And because this does a redirect, it will actually not process either of these actions. Um, because before actions will look to see if the before action rendered and if it did it will send it right back to the browser and not even run any of this code and that prevents you from rendering two times which you don't want to do you don't want to render some HTML and some other HTML and not know which one to send back to the browser you can only choose one response to send back and Rails will enforce that so if we hop into our browser and go incognito so we're logged out we can go to slash password, it will hit the route, it will hit the before action and see, oh, you're not actually signed in, we must redirect you to the sign in path. And so it has done that and set that alert for us. Now, if we're signed in, we can go and update the nav bar so that it includes that. So we'll say nav bar, HTML, ERB, we'll change this from a span. And we will replace that with a link to to the password path, the edit password path. And now we should see our link is there. And actually edit password path is not a route. So let's run Rails routes and verify what our route name is. So here we have password and that is what it generated. So we could go and tell Rails, hey, why don't you call this edit password path? and that would be a better name for it, and that's what Rails will do. So if we do that, Rails is going to fix that and now make this a link for us. Now we need to also go into the nav bar and make sure that this has the class of nav link, so it looks like a nav bar link. But here, Rails saw that we did a get request, but we didn't actually send any HTML back uh, because we don't have a template for this. So it's saying here, Basically, go create the template for it, you forgot. So let's go do that now. We are going to copy the registrations new again because the password form is actually very similar. 
We're going to create a new folder under views called passwords and a file under there called edit.html.erb. We'll paste this in and we'll say edit password. And instead of going to the sign up path, we will go to the edit password path. And we don't need our email for this. We just need the password and the password confirmation. And we'll change the button text to update password. And that will be that. So we can go into our controller now and we can say current.user.update and we can pass in the params here. So we'll say password params and this will be a new method which will make private since it's not an action it's just a helper method here password params and inside here we'll say params.require user because that was our model for the form uh, model user so the form is going to submit everything under user if you define a model there uh, that is a user and then we'll permit the password and password confirmation fields. And that's the only two that we're going to allow. You won't be able to change your email through this form. So then we can say if it was successfully updated, we can do something. And if not, we can render the edit screen again and display those errors. So let's, if it's successful, redirect to the root path with a notice of password updated. So let's try that out. We'll refresh. We should see that this is loaded. Now our form, we are using the instance variable for at user, but we should be using current.user now for this because we're already logged in, current.user. And this is one of those cases where we will say form.object.errors and form.object.errors because this is now something we can easily use throughout our app. And we can even go into the new user and change this to use form.object, which will re which will actually look for at user uh, and return that as your form object. So that now makes that piece of our forms reusable and we can actually extract that out to a partial and just reuse that wherever we want. And if we wanna change the way our errors look across the application, we change it in one place and that is really handy. So now let's try this with uh, passwords that do not match. We should get an error here. Yep, passwords do not match. And if we change this to a new password, then we will get password updated and all of that works. So now we have um, password updating and we can do other things like add a form for editing our account and so on, um, changing our email. But the last piece of authentication that we really need is forgot your password, which we will do next.